I love you. I love you. Interesting how most people are comfortable with that, but yet some people are very uncomfortable hearing, I love you. Yet, if you think about it, people are comfortable, or some are, hearing the daily death count on the news. Doesn't make sense. Let's do a quick, quick little... Um, quick little relaxation moment. I want everybody to, where you're sitting, just sit in love. Think about somebody that you truly love, somebody that you care the most about. Close your eyes for a second if you can, and just think about that love that you have with that person. If any descriptors come to mind, remember them, words, anything that comes to your mind. Okay, hopefully that's enough time. Anybody have any descriptors or that feeling of love? Yes? Unfiltered, Unfiltered. thank you. Somebody else? Yes? Joy, Joy. perfect. Yes? Pardon? Unconditional. Unconditional. Yes, thank you. Beautiful. Beautiful, perfect. Yeah, nice. Yes, sir? I'm sorry? Confidant, beautiful. Pardon? Affinity, nice. Safe, okay. Now, one more, let's go. What? Fun. That's right, we all need a little fun, right? Okay, so let's think about this in a business sense for a minute, or even if you're going to have a conversation with a loved one. If you got into that space that you just got into now, a minute ago, it only took 30 seconds, and you felt that feeling of love and got in that space, and then you were having a work meeting with a client, a boss, whoever it is, or you're having, going to have a serious conversation with your significant other, and before you did that, you got in that space what would happen? Transformation. Transformation. You'd have all those same descriptors of of feeling safe, unconditional. Um, There'd be a better connection, which is what you have when you're in love. And obviously, the world's going to be a better place. And so that, that little exercise will help you to connect better in your work environment, and it only takes a moment, and it's a moment of mindfulness to set an intention and put yourself in the right space for success, and the success is connecting. Let's do another little exercise. Think of your earliest childhood memories. It could be two, could be five, six, doesn't matter. Think of your earliest childhood memories and do it without any conditions. Don't judge it. No no good, bad, don't start judging. I don't want to think about that. Just take a moment, think about your earliest childhood memories. Okay? Go ahead and sit with that for just a moment. I'll give you a moment to get those. When you have them, you can write them down or just remember them since they're memories. <laughs> Okay, hopefully you have them. If not, you'll be thinking about them while I'm talking. I'll come back to the childhood memories in a minute, 
but I want to tell you my story a little bit. From a very early age, I had a belief that whatever I needed, I could earn and, and, and receive. I had a success mindset. And this started out little, like most entrepreneurial kids, you're mowing lawns, paper route, pulling weeds, washing windows, whatever it took, you figured out how to pay for that bicycle or that baseball glove or whatever you wanted. And that success mindset for me led to, it was learned, learned to a belief that I have that I can do anything anyone else can do, anything. I'm not a neuroscientist because I don't want to be. <laughs> However, I believed I could do anything anyone else could do. For me, that was very beneficial because it led to a very successful sales career, multiple top awards won, very great financial life or um, family life for my, me and my family. And then that belief that I could do anything anyone else could do also helped me to create a very good career as a manager and leader. It just kept going. Our team won multiple awards in the industry as well as within the company. And in doing this, we went from the company having a $10 million a year in revenue. Fast forward for eight or nine years, we have almost $900 million a year in revenue. Obviously, that's a tremendous success. Changes at the top, along with a merger, along with a recessionary period, Within a one-year period, I lose my job, a position that I was kind of the guy there for sales, for motivating people, for mentoring and leading. I, 23-year marriage ended in the same period of time. And since it was a recessionary period, I also lost massive wealth that had been created when you sell assets at the bottom in a recession, divide them up, you, lo you lose. It's, that's it, you lose. So I'm trying to understand. So with this, I take, I'm trying to understand my feelings and emotions in this. But I've been taught my whole life to stuff them. So I'm not getting very far. And what I'm trying to really understand is why I felt stuck. Because I wasn't, I had an identity loss to the position and that attachment to the persona. I had an identity loss in the marriage because in our family, our home was the one that everybody wanted to come to that we had traditions and holidays that people would come over. And once you have that identity loss, that divorce, that goes away. It ended. The money part, I wasn't worried about the money. I had made lots of money. I know how to make money. I know how to motivate people. I know how to do that to make the money. But that identity loss, it had me stuck. And I couldn't understand why. I knew all the tools, all the tricks, all everything I needed to do to keep moving forward. I was doing them. I was making money. But I wasn't crushing it. I wasn't at that excellent level that it takes to feel good where you're living your life with passion where when you're doing something, time flies because it doesn't matter, you love it. That wasn't happening for me, and I did not understand why. Fortunately for me, I've been blessed, I believe, my whole life. I was on a spiritual path at that time. 
I had learned a lot of tools, meditation, mindfulness, setting intentions, which I didn't realize I'd been doing my whole sales career, but I, I called it goal setting, but it really was intention setting at that level. However, one thing was still missing, which was why was I stuck? Well, I went through a process called recapitulation. There's a few other tools that I used that I'd learned. And it opened up all these patterns in my life that I'd seen. So now I'm questioning the patterns. I'm sitting with these patterns. I'm trying to understand what do they mean. Here's the information. What does it mean? One of the things that came up were childhood memories. Three of them kept coming up. And so I sat with those. I didn't get very far. So, blessed again, I have entered into a relationship with a lovely lady. We have a very loving relationship. I fall in love, and everything's going along great. And I had asked the higher powers that be when and if I'm fortunate to have another relationship, please make sure this relationship is communicative. I want to make sure that we're communicating. I don't want to, you know, when you don't communicate, it just festers and builds problems. So I want to communicate. I want our desires and our uh, beliefs and the things that we want to do, I want them all to be the same or very similar, not exactly the same, but similar so we can enjoy life in a passionate way. We can go do things together. So I meet Trish, and Trish is a very good communicator. <laughs> so careful what you ask for because she's very communicative. Well, She's also very good and in touch with her feelings and emotions, which she would ask me when I would, we were talking about something, how does that make you feel? And I said, oh, I feel fine. She's like, no, how does that make you feel? And I'm like, well, how does it make me feel? I'm thinking, well, I'm not thirsty and I'm not hungry. I'm not hot or cold. I feel good. She was having none of that. None of it. So I got in touch with my feelings. I'm still getting more and more in touch with my feelings and emotions. I don't know about all of you, but if you were like me growing up, if you were whining about something or having an issue, you were told, you want something to whine about? I'll give you something to cry about. And so you learn to stuff it. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of us do. And it took me quite a few years to learn not to stuff it. I'm still learning, by the way. I don't think it'll ever end. However, the best thing that happened for me from Trish getting me in touch with my feelings and emotions so that I wasn't stuffing it is... I went back and sat with these three childhood memories. When I was about four years old, my father came home with this beautiful, beautiful candy apple red bicycle. It was glistening. It had, it was big, it, you know, two-wheeler white, white walls. It had uh, chrome that was sparkling. It had tassels. And I, my eyes just got huge, and I was... Oh, my God, this is beautiful. I can hardly wait to get a hold of that thing. I don't even know how to ride a bike. I've never ridden a bike. My father says, oh, no, no, this is not for you. This is for a family. We're giving this to a, a relative. And my, rec my recollection was that he'd won this at a raffle as a four-year-old. That was my recollection. About five um, we have two cats, the one that was mine. I'm told we're giving it to my grandmother because she lost her cat, so we're giving her your cat. I didn't think too much of it, you know, as a little kid. You're like, you're sad, but you, you know, you, you give away the cat. 
seven or eight right in there. My brother and I had been um, given a Christmas present of a dog, a pretty good-sized dog, Airedale. And that we had it for about a year, and then um, it was given away to a farmer or a rancher. Uh, it, it'll be happier there. There's more room to roam and everything. So I had never thought about these thoughts. So I have this belief system. I can do anything anyone else can do. I have a success mindset for sales. And I'm v being very successful and productive in life. All of a sudden, this massive identity loss event happens. I lose the persona at work. I lose the uh, marriage of 23 years and massive wealth loss. This created a massive identity loss, which basically flipped this coin. On one side was the beliefs that I had created. On the other side of that coin was you're not good enough for a bicycle. You don't deserve to have a cat. You don't, you're not worthy of a dog. Now, I know my parents did not mean that when that happened and when they said it. And I love my family and my, my parents. I know that's not what they had in mind. However, that is a conditioned belief that was imprinted in me when I was young, four or five, whatever. That conditioned belief, along with inner critic, that if any of you ever study the inner critic, will tell you that that helps perpetuate that type of thing. Fortunately for me, I had a burning desire to have things that I wanted and believed I could. So the one side of that coin that was down that said I wasn't worthy was actually the driver of all of these beliefs that was driving me for the success that I had. The massive loss flipped the coin up to where that not worthy was coming up and I was getting stuck, right? Now, that stuckness, the hardest part of that was feeling that whatever you've done isn't going to be worth it because you'll lose it anyways right? You lose the family. You lose the wealth. You lose that persona. So, you know, you may be wondering, why is this guy sharing this with me and being so vulnerable? I'll tell you, if any of the words coming out of my mouth can save any of you from the experience that I've had, it's worth it. It's worth it. I don't wish it upon anybody. The other reason that I'm being vulnerable and sharing it with you is many of us have hidden beliefs that we're not aware of. We have beliefs that we are aware of. We have beliefs that we don't even realize what they're doing. So the first, the other part of that is what beliefs do you have in you right now that are holding you back, that are keeping you from taking the step to do whatever you're passionate about, from, for taking that leap of faith? I'm sure you've heard it that it's not always about being prepared as much as it is about taking the leap of faith and, and stepping up, stepping out, whatever it is. The thing that was so important for me in this process to get unstuck was awareness, first of all. Awareness of that belief that was on the other side of that coin. Awareness of the other beliefs that I have or had. So what I do? I start questioning everything. You have to question the words that are coming out of your mouth every single day. Write some things down and wonder, where did that come from? I know we've all heard ourselves, which we really think, wow, that sounded like my mom or my dad. <laughs> right? And so 
where are those words coming from? Where are the thoughts coming from? Do you believe that? Is that just chatter or is that something you truly believe? Is that a belief that is because we're here in the United States? Is it a belief from where you grew up? Is it a belief from the area you live in? I mean, we can all think of a lot of beliefs that are different in California than New York, right? I mean, they probably think we're all fruit and nuts out here. So you have to question to understand the down deep, where's that belief from? Because if not, it can come back and bite you like mine did. It could be preventing you from achieving your passion and your success at the levels you want to. And it can probably do other things that I'm not even aware of yet. So the, the piece that was the most transformative for me was being aware, because I used to, you know, how do you feel and, and everything. It was like, I don't even want to go there. But now every time something happens, I have to go there because that's where you get the truth. That's the only way you can become and get to your true authentic you. Your true authentic self is to know why you have those childhood thoughts, why you have those thoughts in your head, why you have the words coming out of your mouth. That's the only way. So I want to make sure that everybody, that I've gotten enough points across to help you with connect with love, because that love is going to help you in your communications. Loving yourself is going to help you get to that emotion. Get to your beliefs. Uncover your beliefs because uncovering them is going to help you work through them. And the only way you can really truly work through them is to understand what they are and then have from emotion and feelings and know the root of that belief, and then to be able to move on, the awareness of it and the transformation in changing with your mindset and your intention to the life that you want of your true authentic self. That's the key in all of that transformation. If anything I've said resonates with you and I can help you at all, my name Paul Rinker, Paul D. Rinker at gmail.com. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it.